Today is a deload. I'm working up to 145 kilos for a triple. This should sit at around RP6 to 7. But nothing too mad, nothing too heavy. Lightweight baby. Stop. <clears throat> Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. I'm going to smash that phone if the alarm keeps going off. What's rather funny is I'm the one setting it. So if anything, I should smash myself. Anyway, moving on to some back off sets. Four sets of five reps of 120 kilos. Yep. Only three more. Okay. Again, like I said yesterday, it's a deload, so I'm not going as heavy as usual. I'm working up to 240 kilos for a single pause deadlift at what should hopefully be around RP six, seven. I'm gonna use the straps because I just want to get the most out of the exercise. I'll tell you what, I'll work up to like 200 kilos and then use the straps. Okay, this bar is just dog shit. It's got a soft knurling, it rolls. Fuck it. I'm just gonna use my straps. Okay, well, I may sound bipolar, but I'm gonna give it another chance. I can confirm that this barbell is dog shit. As long as I keep chalking up between each set, I do believe I can reach the 220 kilo mark without too much of an issue. But like I've already said, you know, I've called this barbell dog shit twice now. And I'm going to repeat myself once more. The knurling is soft. There's fuck all knurling. I like a knurling that digs into the very fibres of my soul. And for some reason, it rolls like a bitch. I grip that barbell as hard as I grip my dick and it still rolls. I give that shit the death grip. It just keeps escaping away from me. Hmm. <laughs> 
That's all right. Well, that wasn't a fucking pause deadlift, was it? That was, however, a pause deadlift. Too keen. I finally upgraded my phone. I'm using my shitty Google Pixel 7, which caused me many hassles on a technological level for my program, calculator, timer, blah, blah, blah. And then my iPhone. I know, I've gone down the dark side from Android to iPhone, but they do have the best processor for editing and I spend a lot of time editing, it only makes sense. There's a cinematic mode on there. I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but we shall see. Very nice. I've just looked back at the footage of the cinematic mode. It's pretty damn sexy, I will say. The background blur paired with the low lighting. God damn. A videographer's porn hub right there. They'll be looking at this footage. Straight to death grip. Straight to heaven. This footage will kill them on a spiritual level. Anyway, back off sets. 215 kilos for a set of four. I have an idea. I have a very good idea. Instead of wearing down my grip further for my back offsets, I'm going to use straps. I could have carried on all the way to the last back offset, but by then my, my thumbs would have been very sore. And considering it's a back offset, I see no point in ruining my thumbs. I think I'm pretty damn satisfied with the 240 kilo pause rep with the double overhand hook grip. That's enough for me to walk away from this gym saying I'm fucking satisfied. <laughs> yeah, I just said that, yeah. I'm satisfied as you can tell. Anyway, two more reps. With most exercises, you'll notice that there's usually two or three back offsets with the same weight. But when it comes to pause deadlifts, they definitely fatigue the absolute shit out of your posterior chain, as well as your anterior chain, but mainly your posterior chain. They also burn the shit out of your CNS. So, these fatigue management back offsets are simply three back offsets, but with lower weight, if that makes sense, as opposed to using the same weight. Anyway, I'm doing it for the same amount of reps, four reps, 190 kilos, then I back off to 170 kilos and do that for four reps.
Yeah. One more set, 170 kilos. Four reps, like I just said. Yeah. Okay, on to the last set. Let's just get straight to it, shall we? And then I'll do a bit of chitter chattering after. Let's get it. Let's do a bit of chitter chattering now, alright. Okay, brain. So, when I set up for my stance, the first thing I do is I look directly down at my feet. I make sure, let me turn off the musical instruments, that the barbell is in line with the center of my foot. Then, I bring my toes in. Toes? Heels. I touch those ho toes? Hose? <laughs> yeah, I touch those hose. I touch those heels like Alice in the Wonderland. Clip, clip, clop, clop. Clap, clap. Then I set up my grip. Obviously, if I'm working to my top set, I'll use a double overhand hook grip. But if I'm doing my back off sets, I use my straps. What I usually do, I stick my hands nicely close to my thighs. I drop my hips. And that is where I grip. That way, I can keep my arms nice and close, which allows me to lengthen them fully. Breathe, out, and in. Take the slack out, and pull. Nice and controlled on the eccentric. Pull slack out. And that is my deadlift setup. This is also my last set, my last back off set. Don't worry about that, it was just a callus, I will pick that up. I shall show you how I dismantle the barbell. Not the barbell itself, but the weight plates on it. I take the clip off, I go to the side. Jefferson squat or deadlift, whatever it's called. One hand on the neck of the barbell and I just slide the weight plates off. Jobs are good. And then, this is the easy part. Slap that clip off, clip that clip off. Now you could either slide it off if you had one more plate left on the end, or you could just do this. Jobs are good. I think the true hard part of getting it off is taking it back when you've already fatigued yourself getting it off. But uh, you can take the double plate approach. Which gives the illusion that you're putting away less even though you're putting away the same amount. Okay, so I kind of fucked up. I didn't record any of my dumbbell flat bench presses. So I'll record all of my dips. Obviously, like I've said over and over again now, it's a deload. Got to reduce the load it's a deload. I'm going to do probably dip, uh, body weight dips. I might throw 10 kilos or maybe 15 at most. Got to do three sets of 10. So let's get to it, shall we? How am I feeling? I'm feeling all right. I think, I think I'm gonna to stick to body weight and then go back to doing weighted next week when I start loading again. I revised my form. And I think 
I'm going to make a couple of tweaks during this uh, during the deload. I always like to look at my technique and see if I can improve slightly. So when I go into the rest of the block or start a new block, I am doing things in an effective and efficient way. I suppose it would be efficient and then it would be effective. Whatever. Right. So. I need to make sure I depress my scapula. I mean, the two key things to a efficient and effective dip technique is when you're up here, your elbows are internally rotated like that, you know. I'm not waving it outwards, I'm waving it inwards, I'm pulling it inwards. And then the scapular depression, you know, pushing away and completely depressing your scapula. And then from there, you fall into it with your chest. So you can stretch it at the bottom, but you must not go too far, because if you do, you start to overstretch the, the tendons around that area, which can lead to shoulder and chest injuries. I would like to start throwing some helpful tips and tricks into my videos as opposed to just me training. That way, I'm not just entertaining, I'm also educating. And the last set of dips. Again, focusing on technique. Okay. Staying a bit more upright. Seems to feel a lot better. Hmm, hold on, that was eight. I need to do two more. Yeah, I'm gonna try and stay upright for these ones. I feel like it was hitting the right areas a bit, Bill. Oh yeah. There we go, that's a sweet spot. That's how I'm gonna be doing my dips in the future. Anyway, so, it's time for me to leave the gym. I didn't get round to doing my, my side lateral raises, my hammer curls, and my overhead extensions, but I have some weights at mine now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post this, and then tomorrow I'm going to post just me doing the side lateral raises, the hammer curls, and the overhead tricep extensions at home with my own equipment, which is different, I suppose. I have my own vision for that. A deadlift barbell, metal plates, a different speciality bars like a power bar, and a higher power bar. I've got a real good vision. I'm gonna make a board. And on this board, I'm going to put pictures up of the equipment that I want in my own little home gym. I will still go to gym, public gyms, or even private gyms, home family run gyms like Hell's House. But I'll probably do the squat, bench and deadlift and any other compound exercise, including the front squats, clean and jerks, snatches, 
Okay, I've got this weird OCD where I have to make sure that the exercises, when I say them, are in order. So when I said clean and jerk and snatch, knowing that snatch is before clean and jerk in the Olympic lifting, why does that bug me? What is wrong with me? Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so I have this, this image and this board will have all those, those things that I want within the vision, within the image that I'm portraying in my mind. I want to make a reality. I feel like vision is the start of manifestation. Action is the thing that makes that. It brings it to life. It's easier said than done, of course. Mainly money, my biggest fucking, my biggest roadblock when it comes to making my own little home gym is money. Obviously, gym equipment is fucking expensive. I'm gonna have some free, like a freestanding squat rack with a, a nice power bench, you know. But all these things cost so much money and I'm, I don't have a lot of money. My job is national minimum wage. Even though it's patient transport and dealing with people who are vulnerable, I still don't get paid a lot. That's a very controversial topic that I will not get into. I refuse to get into that. Maybe you can discuss that in amongst yourself, but personally, I'm not gonna get into it. Anyway, I've just gotta continue smashing out these videos, continue entertaining and educating you guys and girls, small percentage of girls. I've looked at the demograph actually, there's a wide variety of people watching my videos, mainly, um, English, English or United, um, United Kingdom and American, USA, United States of Americans, Americans, whatever. But there's so, so many more who watch me and I think to myself, like, how are they fucking watching me if they don't understand what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm rambling. Yeah, hopefully all these things come to fruition. Is it fruition? You know, they become a tree with fruit and the fruit drops off and I pick up the fruit and eat it. That fruit dropping off and me picking up and eating it is the deadlift barbell with 300 kilos worth of weight plates. Yeah, sounds good to me. Just to leave it off on a good note, I think you guys and girls sit down tonight and vision what you want. Vision how you want your future to be. Whether that be it sounds crazy, whether that be an astronaut, you know, the tip, the stereotypical desire that a child has, the astronaut thing that everyone seems to use when it comes to, what do you want to do when you're older? And the little kid goes, oh, I want to be an astronaut. That kind of, that kind of thing. Just, just see a vision. Obviously be somewhat realistic. You're not going to be able to fucking grow wings and fly off into the, into the sky. You're not going to be able to shoot lasers from your eyes. But you can achieve a lot more than you think you're capable of. You just gotta have a vision and you've gotta do everything you can from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep to take an extra step ahead of yourself every day. Me creating content on top of my full-time job which has a variety of shift patterns that I struggle to, to have a work-life balance around but I still try my hardest to get my content out there and it does pay off now I've, I've just hit 1,000 subscribers that to me is a hell of a lot of people watching my YouTube videos now I do have almost 18,000 on Instagram but it's different YouTube is very different to Instagram and TikTok YouTube is very very difficult to pull an audience very difficult to hold subscribers so, to me, YouTube is my main focus, which is why I'm now doing my videos as much as I can for YouTube. What, what am I going on about? Anyway, that's a wrap. I shall see you tomorrow. Okay. Welcome to my outdoor home gym. I don't store the weight plates outdoors. I store them in my shed. Just so everyone doesn't have a hissy fit over them getting rained upon and rusting. I mean, they're already rusty anyway. All these weight plates and all of this equipment was given to me by a family member, which I greatly appreciate. I'm going to use them mostly for my little little bits, like the side delt, 
and rear delt flies, bicep and bicep work, things like that. Um, I'm going to get an EZ coil bar. I'm going to get a straight bar. Like I said in my previous video, or maybe I might combine this with my previous video. Maybe I might just make it one video. We shall see. You shall see anyway. I shall know. You shall see. Anyway, what are we doing? We're doing some barbell dumbbell curls. What? Three sets of ten with... I think this is just over 20 kilos on each dumbbell. Let's slap some music on. The best lighting comes from the sun itself. Got the fat grips on for that extra forearm action. I think that was Teddy Jama. I lost count. I think I better be safe than sorry and do another two on each arm. Okay. Two more sets of that. And uh, I'll move on to some sort of tricep exercise. Set number two with the 20 kilo dumbbells for 10 reps. Nice and close, nice and personal, just like I like it. And I know it's just how you like it as well. I never sit down. <sighs> I've changed. Thought I'd get into a bit more of a home gym style apparel. Yeah, that's the best way of putting it. What is that flying around? Some sort of bird of prey, I believe. I'm going to cut out the the majority of the last clip I'm doing the tricep overhead extensions simply because half of my fucking body is cut out so hopefully I don't encounter the same issue this time in fact I tell you what it'd be better if I faced it this angle so as a, as I'm gonna make the most of the Sun and the lighting
I think my triceps are fried. From the dips yesterday. One more set of that, and I might do some chin-ups and dips again, mainly for biceps and triceps, or I might find another tricep exercise as opposed to dips. I don't know why I'm standing like this, because obviously I did yips, did dips yesterday. I've lowered the weight to between 12, 13 kilos, a little bit lower than 15 kilos. That was kind of stating the obvious, simply because my triceps are a little bit fatigued. I did do close grip bench press and bench press and dips very recently, which would make, oh my God, I can't speak. It would make sense as to why my triceps are fatigued. So I'm going to play it smart like I usually do, or try to anyway, and bash out one more set of overhead tricep extensions for a set of 10. Get the old booty, booty cam. I don't know how this is going to go. I really hope I'm in shot. Oh, that's got the fat grip. Don't want the fat grip on. Yeah, that's better. Ooh. I can focus on full roam. And squeeze. There we go. With these, you don't want to go too low like I was just doing. You want to go about here. Otherwise, you overstretch the muscle. And the tendon. Damn, lovely. Okay. I mean, I've now got a choice. I can either wrap it up. Oh, no. I've got some... Side doubt raises, almost forgot. Question is what weight? Um, let's go with like 10 kilos a side. Ow, no fucking bastard spider just bit me. I didn't do anything to you, you bastard. Oh, you little bastard. Caused me a small rash. I don't usually care about spiders being on me. I'm not too bothered about big ones, you know. But when they bite me, they make me want to pull out the insect spray and completely terminate their and their family's existence. Wipe that angry bloodline of spider out. But then I suppose... It's kind of a good thing that it bit me because it's instincts are kicking in and you know survival of the fittest and all if it's gonna see some danger and attack that danger it's gonna survive a lot longer than the ones that just kind of sit there like oh look a human a big shoe about to stomp on me i'm just gonna stand there and stare so yeah i suppose you know fair play to bite me but it's Caused me quite a bit of irritation. I think the spider was about, I don't know, a bit bigger than a 50p coin. And it's caused me a small bump. That, I mean, the stinging's not bothering me, it's the fucking itching. 
Oh shit. I'm lacking on the old white plates. Due to a lack of white plates, I can't do, you know, uh, it's not really lateral because I'm still working both sides. Okay, it's lateral. It's not unilateral because unilateral is bam, which is what I'm about to do. And lateral is bam, bam, which is both arms at the same time, at the same pace, at the same rhythm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to bah, like some cable ones, but with a dumbbell. I suppose my arm would be better straight, but whatever. Bro. <sighs> It feels alright. Okay, okay, that felt okay. <laughs> Two more sets. Oosa. Let's get a little bit of uh, homemade stool action. And I'm not talking about poo poo either. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh. This is so much better than doing it the way I was doing it before. I do need to adjust myself slightly though, so I can tilt over a bit more. That way I get into a better position to squeeze that side delt, that lateral delt. Well, this little homemade stool is rather stable. There, yeah, I could do my bicep curls and try some over extent overhead extensions with them. I could do some front raises, bam, bam, even some rear delts. Come on! Like my baby! Yeah! Cool. Alright. My mind just went into some other realm there. I thought I was Ronnie Coleman. It's a very small... You know. Yeah. Um, that's two sets. I'll probably do another set off camera. Or i do it on camera. Yeah, I'll do it on camera. A little rear view. I started off the left last time, so... Keep to it. Wait, hold on. No, I didn't. Start off the right. Okay, I'm going to give it all forward. There we go. I went one more, I went the other arm. Oh. 
All right, yeah. Uh. <coughs> Excuse me. No, it just went up my nose. It's in my mouth. I do apologize. <coughs> anyway, that is the last set of this. Oh, no, it's not. I haven't done rear delt flies yet. I'm supposed to do them on SPD. Well, SB day. It's SB day now, not SBD. It's SB, then it's BD. And anyway, oh shit! I might, get, might have to blur one of the syllables. Um, yeah, some red outs, I guess. Put my theory to the test. I can't really come over with this. Just horse cocking these rear delt flies. Um, now that'll be it. I'll call it a wrap here. Simply because I'm just going to smash out the remainder of the two sets and then get to my usual day to day basics, you know, clearing up and all that sort of stuff. Seashells, she sells seashores on the sea. Floor. She sells seashells on the sea floor. She sells seashells on the sea floor. Uh, that doesn't sound right. I think I think something's going wrong here. Oh well, it's a wrap. <laughs>